Um, you know, angel investing used to be this thing of, you know, I'm a guy, I've had some success, I want to have this hands-on mentoring relationship, you know, with a handful of companies. And and it got to the point where, you know, you have, a, you have an incubator called 500 Startups. I mean, where the idea is speed and velocity and putting lots of bets and lots of things, and the sense that you can still somehow add value with doing that. I mean... It's, it's really sort of changed what angel investing was. Yeah, and I still think there are people that operate at all level of the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. You have people who self-acknowledge that they spray and pray, and then you have other people who say, you know, to spray means that I don't use discretion, and to pray means I don't add value, so I don't spray and pray. I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole level of, of, of investing styles. Mm -hmm. You know, our approach has been that we, we, we've, we've tried to focus on a few things. The first is, uh, one of the innovations or differences between us and I'd say every other venture firm out there that I know of is we take board seats, but our board model is different. You know, we focus on the fact that the first 24 months of a company are a special time in the company. You're hiring your initial team, you are figuring out, you go to market strategy, you're figuring out your pricing, you're figuring out uh, who your, you know, what, you know, who your customers are, your competitors, maybe even who your acquirers are. Like, you know, so much of that gets baked in the first two years. Mm -hmm. um, you're setting your culture, and and so what we said is we're going to take board seats for that first two-year period of time. That's where we specialize. And then, as the company, you know, we do a seed round, then the company might raise an A and a B. When they go and raise their B round, we step back. Um, and what that's done is it has allowed us to scale because it has allowed us to sort of say, when we write a check, we're going to figure out where are we good mm -hmm. and where are other people good, and we're going to focus on that time where we could add value. So when you have a baby, you're going to get a baby nurse? <laughs> yes. Okay, so great, great choice because <laughs> when we had my second child, we got this baby nurse. I had one for the first one, though. Oh. Well, you're smarter than I was. But you know, the job of a baby nurse, at least you know, we had someone who came at 7 p.m. and left at 7 a.m. And we're yeah. basically just like, you know, those nights for the first couple of months stink. Yeah. You know, the, you know, you're not bonding with a baby because you want to get them to bed. But they're getting up every two hours and you got to change them and feed them. And, and, and you sort of have to help the baby find the rhythm of life, mm -hmm. right? Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. I've lived so, it. I know where you're <laughs> so, going with it. <laughs> so, you know, and then, you know, my kids are older now. Uh -huh. We don't have baby nurse. We have babysitters. And you know, it's not an every two hour intense hands-on thing. Instead, the babysitter is like, you eat dinner, do your homework, go to bed, don't, don't burn the house down. Not in that <laughs> order, but, um, you know, but, but like the babysitter is sort of there just to sort of, you know, to, right. you know, to work at a different level mm -hmm. of oversight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our view is that there's a different skill set that's needed to be an effective baby nurse to help someone find that rhythm of life, help someone sort of figure this stuff out versus to be a babysitter. Right. And, and, and there are, you know, hundreds or thousands of VCs out there who are much better babysitters than we are. Mm -hmm. But we think we're pretty good baby nurses. What's the skill set difference in being a baby nurse and a babysitter? Um, I'd say it's, it's, far, it's more active engagement during a shorter period of time because you're, you know, a board member. I mean, you're helping them hire. You're helping, your... you're helping them figure out office locations. You're helping them figure out go to market. You're helping them with product. Like, it's you know, the a board member for the first two years, you're not sitting there with governance. You know, the yeah. typical role of a board member is you know governance and whether to hire, fire. You know, the CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, establish compensation. You know, and a few key strategic decisions where, where, you know, board members, I'm not trying to, to minimize the value that VCs provide. I've been in a lot of boardrooms and I've seen VCs really help provide value. Um, you know, but oftentimes it's at the strategic level. And a lot of times where we find that we could be the most impactful in those first two years, it, what the entrepreneurs are asking us for are those tactical decisions. Right. And, and so that's how we've figured out a model that, you know, being A, able to deliver a high level, an intense level of engagement during a much shorter period of time mm -hmm. means that if we, if we write 25 checks a year and we take board seats in maybe 20 of them because other people might have board seats and you know, you're on boards for 18 months, you know, that's not, you're, you're, you're on maybe 30 boards and with seven partners, that's not a heavy board load because you're always coming off of another board. Mm -hmm. So that's our way of sort of being able to sort of make sure that we can stay true to our craft of adding value. Mm -hmm. And then when you augment that with the software that we're trying to build, because you know, where you could actually, in addition to getting what we think is a really smart partner, you're getting the access to you know, 500 other engineers. You know, you know, not just being a CEO, because also think about this. 
most VCs spend their time with a CEO. Mm -hmm. But being a CTO of a startup company is extremely lonely. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to figure out, you know, how are other people doing deployments? Uh, you, know, how are, you know, what type of sprint schedule are they doing? What level of QA or pair, you know, pair, you know, pairing are they doing? And the ability for C CTOs to, to ask questions um, without fear, you know, in a level of trust, in an environment of trust, that's important. Mm -hmm. CFOs, CMOs, we have engineers, like all of the engineers in our portfolio companies could, could interact with each other. So, so that what we've also found is in addition to scaling our time by focusing in the short term, you're also able to sort of provide a much deeper level of value add because you're able to touch throughout the organization. Mm -hmm.